Hello everyone and welcome to Azam Sharp Weekly. In this video, we are going to build a to-do list application which will have multiple sections. So we will have one section for pending items and one section for completed items. And we can check mark items to move it from one list to the other list. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we need to do is to create some sort of a model to hold our to-do list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a very simple struct called task, which will consist of properties like ID, name, and is completed. By default, it will be false. Next up, we need to create a sections, like those pending sections and completed sections. So I'm just gonna use an enum and making sure that I can iterate over it. So I'm just gonna use the case iterable. Now inside our content view, we can create some of these tasks. So we're just gonna hard code these tasks. So there we go. Okay. And now I want to go ahead and create the sections and then display the task in each section. So how do we do that? Let's create a list. Inside the list, we can perform a for each and go over each section by using sections.allcases. In this case, we are going to get access to the section. And now we can create a particular section over here. So if I want to display something, let's go ahead and check out different overloads that are available for section. You can see we can use content and header, that's perfect. So over here, we will simply display content because we will eventually display the content. And for the header, we will display the text with the section.raw value. So hopefully we'll be able to see something over here, which means we will be able to see two sections. One will be pending and one will be completed, as you can see. We have the pending and we have the completed. The next thing we want to do is for each section, we want to display the task. Now, the quickest way to display the task is to just run a for each loop, right? So for each, we can go through the task and we can simply display, we will get the task, we will assign the task value and we can say task of name. Now, if you do that, you can see that in both the section, pending as well as the completed, you are showing all the tasks. And that is not really what we want to do. We want to show pending tasks in pending and completed tasks in completed. So how can we achieve that? Well, there are multiple ways of achieving that. What I'm going to do is create a property over here and I will call it pending task. And this is going to return a binding of the task instead of an array of the task. And you'll see in a moment that why we are returning binding. Next, we can go ahead and go through the task array and filter it out. Now, the reason that we are using a dollar sign over here is that we want to return you the array of binding and not an array of task. So I'll do a filter. And since this is the pending task, we are going to go ahead and return all the tasks where the is completed dot ramp value is actually false. So make sure that you put a false or an exclamation mark over there. The same exact concept can be applied for completed task. So I'm just going to go ahead and create completed task. Let's go ahead and make it plural. And in this case, I do want to return all the tasks that are completed. So we're going to remove the bang sign. So it's not a not, it's just completed true. Now we can go back to our for each and instead of displaying all the task, we can display the task based on the section. So if the section is equals to pending, then we can display pending task. Else we can display completed task. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh our Xcode preview. Okay, so now over here we are getting some issue. Since this is a binding, we're gonna get the binding, which is represented by dollar sign, and we can use that. 
Let's go ahead and refresh it. You can see that I'm using the binding over here also. And at least now it is displaying us the correct task. In the pending, we have two tasks and the completed is one task. The completed task is identified by it's completed to true. It would be a good idea to create a task view cell, which will manage the display of the task instead of messing around over here. So let's go ahead and create a new structure. We will call it task view cell. And this will be a view var body some view. And in order to create a task view cell, you need to pass in the binding. So we're going to get the binding. There we go, task. And now you can display anything you want. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the H stack and going to display text task dot name. And apart from task dot name, it will be a good idea to display the checkbox, right? So we can use system name over here and we can say square dot, well, just square is fine, I guess. Square is simply going to use the San Francisco symbol for a square, which will be kind of like this. Now, instead of using the text over here, maybe we can use our newly created task view cell. There we go. Okay, so we need to put it as a binding because that is the one that it expects the task view cell. Let's go ahead and run it. Now you can see the checkbox is with all of these items. If I run this and I check mark this, nothing really happens. Well, nothing really happens is because we're always displaying the checkbox, meaning the square. So we need to find out if the task is actually completed, then we will display something else like not a checkbox or not a square, but we will display a checkmark dot square. So it's a square with a check mark or else we will display a square. You can already see that how it actually works because right now over here, you can see the check mark doing its job. The other thing we want to do is when you actually press or tap on the image, we can fire the tap gesture and we can make sure that the is completed is reversed. So whatever the value of is completed is, we're just gonna invert it. Let's go ahead and run it. And now you can see that it is working out really good. We can select our items and they are automatically moving from one place to the other. All right, so another thing that will be great to have is, let's go ahead and run the app and you'll see that when all the tasks are moved to either completed or all the tasks are moved to pending, the completed list or the completed section kind of looks lonely. It doesn't really have anything. Maybe we should write somewhere that no tasks are available. So how can we do that? Well, one of the ways that we can do that is getting access to a variable and creating a variable called filtered task, which is based on the actual comparison that we're doing. Now we can start using filter task. Now this is really not going to change anything. It's going to work just like before, but now we also have the opportunity to check if the filter task is empty. And if it is empty, then we can go ahead and display something like no task available. Let's go ahead and run this and see how this works. Now you can see that whenever there are no tasks available, the filter task dot is empty returns empty and we can display a text label. Great. One of the other things we would like to do is to actually delete. So let's go ahead and implement delete by calling the on delete on the for each loop. This is going to give us the index set. Once we get access to the index set, we can go ahead and iterate through the index set using the for each loop. 
we will get access to the index. And using the filter task, we will be able to find the task that we want to remove. We will just call it task to delete. And finally, we can perform task.filter and delete the task using their ID. If their ID is not equal to the task.delete.id. But basically what we're doing over here is that we're saying that we're ignoring the task that whose ID is not matching. So if task to delete is one, their ID is one, then we are ignoring the task whose ID is one. And we're picking up two, three, four, five, six. Let's go ahead and build it and run it. When we run this, we can say wash the car, feed the rabbit, and all that stuff is working fine. We can go ahead and try to delete feed the rabbit, and you can see it's gone. We can try to delete wash the car, and we can also delete mow the lawn. So it looks like our application is now working perfectly fine with the delete functionality, as well as sections displaying pending and completed, and checkbox. And that's it. That's your to-do list application using list and sections in Swift UI. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then the best way would be to check out my courses on Udemy. You can see that I have a lot of courses on Swift UI and iOS development, including MVVM design pattern, which is a bestseller, and also the Swift UI course. I also have courses on macOS development with Swift UI and also a cookbook which is 4.9 rating with 100 ratings and stars. So that is a pretty cool course. So definitely check out these courses. The link to these courses is right there in the description. Thank you so much.